O God of might, giver of every good gift, put into our hearts the love of your name, full of mercy to all who call to you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters in Christ, um, today is the 22nd week in Ordinary Time, Tuesday of that week. We hear a gospel message where Christ is out teaching and he sends the, the evil spirit, the devil, out of an individual who comes before him, showing his authority, his desire to help individuals who find themselves in a difficult situation. Let's be aware of that as we begin this holy sacrifice and as we take a few moments at the beginning to acknowledge our sins and in so doing prepare ourselves to celebrate this holy sacrifice. I confess to Almighty God and to you my brothers and sisters that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words in what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask Blessed Mary ever Virgin all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. God of might, giver of every good gift, Put into our hearts the love of your name so that by deepening our sense of reverence, we may nurture, you may nurture in us what is good, and by your watchful care, keep safe what you have nurtured. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, the Spirit scrutinizes everything, even the depths of God. Among men, who knows what pertains to the man except his spirit that is within? Similarly, no one knows what pertains to God except the Spirit of God. We have not received the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit who is from God so that we may understand the things freely given us by God. And we speak about them, not with words taught by human wisdom, but with words taught by the Spirit, describing spiritual realities in spiritual terms. Now the natural man does not accept what pertains to the Spirit of God, for to him it is foolishness, and he cannot understand it, because it is judged spiritually. The one who is spiritual, however, can judge everything, but is not subject to judgment by anyone. For who has known the mind of the Lord so as to counsel him? But we have the mind of Christ, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm. The Lord is just in all his ways. The Lord is just in all his ways. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness. The Lord is good to all and compassionate toward all his works. The Lord is just in all his ways. Let all your works give you thanks, O Lord, and let your faithful ones bless you. Let them discourse the glory of your kingdom and speak of your might. The Lord is just in all his ways. Making known to men your might and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is a kingdom for all ages and your dominion endures through all generations. The Lord is just in all his ways. The Lord is faithful in all his words and, all, and holy in all his works. The Lord lifts up all who are falling and raises up all who are bowed down. The Lord is just in all his ways. Alleluia, 
Alleluia, Alleluia. A great prophet has arisen in our midst, and God has visited his people. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus went down to Capernaum, a town in Galilee. He taught them on the Sabbath, and they were astonished at his teaching, because he spoke with authority. In the synagogue there was a man with the spirit of an unclean demon, and he cried out in a loud voice, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Jesus rebuked him and said, Be quiet, get out of him. Then the demon threw the man down in front of them and came out of him without doing him any harm. They were all amazed and said to one another, What is there about his word? For with authority and power he commands the unclean spirit and they come out. The news of him spread everywhere in the surrounding region. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Gospel message we hear today occurs right after what we heard yesterday. And if you remember, Jesus went back to Nazareth and he spoke when he was there in the temple and by the end, the people, basically, he had to pass through their midst. They wanted to kill him. Uh, a violent reaction to that word of Christ. And in a sense, he moves on, takes his teaching to another location. One of the Gospels, we hear that he moves down to Capernaum. But in any way, that's where we find him today, in Capernaum. And we find him back in the synagogue. He's preaching and teaching the Gospel message. And we hear of the admiration that he has. They were astonished at his teaching because he spoke with authority. And then we hear that he cures this man who cries out, a man who really says who he is. Speaking up, he says, uh, what have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth, the Holy One of God? This man who is possessed recognizes Jesus as the Son of God. You know, we hear throughout Scripture we see individuals, not just those that Jesus cures, because this is before he's cured him. He later drives him out. He silences the spirit from him. But that whole idea that Jesus is there and even someone possessed by the devil, maybe because of that, clearly recognizes who Jesus Christ is and says who he's Holy One of God. You know, in the various Gospels, we're looking at Luke today. The first miracle really was when Christ passes through the midst of the people. We heard about that yesterday. But here, following right on it, we're maybe a week away from when Jesus was there. Because here he's again in the synagogue. It's the Sabbath. And we hear the curing that he does. He cures this man possessed. In Matthew, the first miracle that's worked is the curing of a leper. But in a sense that back in the day, the sickness of an individual was seen linked with something they must have done in their life. It was something evil that might have taken place. In the Gospel of Mark, an expulsion of the devil also takes place, like we heard today. In the Gospel of John, really, the first miracle is at the wedding at Cana, in turning of the water into wine. We hear that. So we have to understand that by looking at the narrative that we find in the, the respective synoptic gospels, each evangelist indicates, so to speak, right out of the blocks, what Jesus' greatest concern is. And here we see, and as we do in some of the others, teaching and driving out the evil spirit. Teaching so you and I have this corpus of the gospel and the people of the day to listen and to follow what is it Christ asks from us to live our life? 
And then we're asked, with the help of the Lord, to go on and live a good life, to avoid evil, to put that, if we feel somehow possessed, to take action. And Jesus Christ asked within his church to, in a sense, send out the evil that's there. So we have to do that. We have to be aware of that. Luke, uh, Jesus goes to Capernaum, and we saw that. Matthew went to live in the Gospel of Matthew. Jesus also goes to Capernaum. So the contact that he has with the people, the writing is much the same. And it, so to speak, it wells up. Uh, the, the people that Jesus is teaching, we have to be, pay attention to that. They acknowledge he's teaching in a different way. You know, the scribes and the Pharisees, they're out teaching also. But they don't do it with the authority that he has. It's done in a completely different way. Mark says Jesus created a critical conscience. And we have to be conscious of that. In going out and talking to the people, in the Gospel of Mark, Mark tells us clearly, Christ creates a critical conscience, a conscience for you and for me, that through that authority where we can speak up, where we have things to say. At the, you know, the fight against the power of evil that we see here in Scripture, uh, the possession of the people, the celebration of Christ, of his word and the driving them out, Jesus restores them, just as Christ restores you and I. And we have to be open to that, though. We had, isn't, there's nothing magical about what takes place. It isn't. We have to be open to the power of Christ in our lives. So as you go forward, living this day and going forward in your week, we have to understand that we see many, due to consumerism, I think some people lose themselves completely. Maybe it's technology in the day when it's used, should we say, in a not so good way. The technology is not wrong. Sometimes the means that it's put to, that is not necessarily always good. But we have to understand that we can become oppressed by debtors, creditors, in a sense that we're, not, we're focused on the wrong thing. In each of those Gospels, Christ focused when he began. And those evangelists who wrote about it, he began teaching the people and talking about the strength of evil and how they had to turn away from it. Sometimes we may be begin in the wrong area and end up immersing ourselves into that, and it's too much. It is not good for who you and I are called to be as men and women of God. So let's take this gospel message that we have today from the Gospel of Luke. And what is it? in the words of Jesus Christ? How do they speak to your soul, to my soul, to our hearts? And maybe we end up saying, I can't hear it. I just can't hear it. That may say to you and to me that, well, we have to stop whatever it is we're letting kind of overwhelm us and turn in another way to listen. Who is Jesus Christ? What is he saying to you and to me? May we be blessed as we strive to always to hear the Lord in our life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Having received the Spirit of God, let us now turn to that God as we bring our petitions this day to him that bishops, priests, and deacons may receive the outpouring of the Holy Spirit in their ministry of preaching. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That political leaders in every nation may be led by God's justice and mercy as they serve their people. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That God may relive and relieve and grant assistance to all who are suffering from the physical, practical, and financial effects of a sickness of, in faith, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. That the Holy Spirit may increase the gifts of understanding and wisdom in this community of faith, let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. And that all who have died in the light of Christ, that they may 
hear the call of Christ to eternity, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. Father, hear the prayers that we have offered this day and answer them according to your will. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, we become to share in the divinity of Christ. Who humbled, himself, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Wash away my iniquities, cleanse me from all my sins. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name for our good and the good of all his holy church. May this sacred offering, O Lord, confer on us always the blessing of salvation, that what it celebrates in mystery, it may accomplish in power through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in goodness you created man, and when he was justly condemned, in mercy you condemned him, through Christ our Lord. Through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the sacred seraphim worship together with exultation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. In giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. 
for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. <clears throat> Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with blessed Joseph, with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation, be, filled to, be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant, Francis, our Pope, be your unworthy servant, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. <clears throat> Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. <clears throat> Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. 
Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. May the blood of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. <clears throat> An act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Renewed by this bread from the heavenly table, we beseech you, Lord, that being the food of charity, it may conform our hearts and stir to serve you in our neighbor through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, with your spirit. and may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Mass is ended. Go in peace.